and go to talk to you today about the power of open source and how WordPress kind of saved my life. So who and why? I'm a happiness engineer with Automatic. Uh, I provide support for customers that are building e-commerce sites using WooCommerce. Um, I'm a university dropout, and I'll, you'll see why that's important uh, later on in my talk. I'm also an open source enthusiast. I believe in the power of open source, uh, which is why we're here. So first of all, um, what is open source? For me, I believe that the, the heart of open source is an open collaboration. And open collaboration is basically any system of innovation or production that relies on uh, goal-oriented yet loosely uh, organized, coordinated participants <laughs> who interact to create a, a product or um, service of value, which they make available to contributors and non-contributors alike, which is essentially what we're doing here. Um, the key things there are people come together around a common goal. Uh, they create a product or a service that has some economic value, and it's offered to both the contributors and people who aren't contributing to it uh, equally. Um, and generally, there's a loosely organized, loosely coordinated uh, team. Now, open source can impact pretty much any field of human endeavor. And it encompasses both open source software and open source hardware. A lot of the time, when we hear open source, people just think about software, which is what WordPress is. But there's open source hardware as well, uh, which stuns a lot of people the, the, the first time they, they hear that. Uh, I'm going to quickly go into a few of my favorite uh, op open source hardware products, just to show how that, how that is. And then I'm going to tie that back to, to WordPress. So uh, the first one is this crucial 3D printer. Who, who here knows anything about 3D printing? So essentially, 3D printing is a process where you can make whatever you want. So like, um, you want uh, a cup. You can either go to the shop and buy one, or you can, have, you can <coughs> print one from, from materials in, in your own home. Um, this 3D printer in particular is really cool because even though this company sells the, the 3D printer, they have the plans for it available online blueprints. You can download it, go buy the materials, and put it together yourself. Uh, and even when you buy from them, I say it's, they have an inception style operation because they 3D print your 3D printer with the 3D printers they already have. Ridiculous. So anything from like making toys, um, making cool tools, um, making prototypes of, of, of little products like, oh, you want to go into production of that uh, water bottle there, but you don't know if anybody's really going to like it. You don't want to have to order like a container load of stuff from China and then find out that nobody wants to buy it. You can print three of them and say, do you like it? And someone says, yes, all right, would you pay 10 pounds for it? And they can put 10 pounds in your hand right away and you're like, okay, all right, this, maybe this has a future. Yeah. Um, this next one is called Mycroft. It's an open source AI. So think Alexa or Google Home. But this is, you get to contribute to the code. You get to see all of the code. You know exactly what's running there. It's private. It's custom. Um, it's not listening to every, everything that you're saying and recording you. It doesn't laugh hilariously in the background. Um, and even though they want to use your voice to train the AI, you have to opt in. So it's got privacy by design built into it, where if you want them to record your voice, you have to go find the setting and say, Please record my voice, which is awesome. And you can do cool things like, um, first of all, you, you can change the, the call name. If you don't want it to be called Mycroft, you want it to be called Neil, you can have it called Neil and say, hey, Neil, what is the time in Edinburgh? And it'll tell you, if you're, if you're in a different country and it needs to convert, it'll, it'll tell you that. How many um, teaspoons are in a tablespoon? It'll go on Wolfram Alpha and it'll figure out that and, and it'll tell you. You can display it on the screen and it can give you a voice uh, prompt as well, and you can teach it really, really cool things. They, they've also got. Um, I, I backed. I backed it on, on Kickstarter, and I got the developer kit. So what you get instead of getting the product like that, you get all the parts that you have to put together yourself, uh, and you get the schematics for three D printing the the casing. So you can then go and three D print it, which means that you can make more whenever you want. Uh, and this is something that uh, um, once once I get it, 
It's going to be a project that I work on with my seven-year-old. We're going to put it together, to, uh, together uh, as a team. And it's a sneaky way of introducing him to, to coding because you, can, you, you write all the code in Python, which is, which, which is an open source uh, language as well. But he, for him, it's just, oh, I need to make it do this cool thing. So it's not like this huge task of I need to learn Python. It's just I need to make it do this one thing. Um, and finally, there's this uh, global village construction set, which is just a DIY, low cost, modular, high performance platform that allows uh, um, for easy fabrication of 50 plus uh, industrial machines that, that you need to build uh, a thriving ecosystem. Or uh, if you want to say build your own little village or little city, you can buy all these, all these pieces of equipment, but they're pretty expensive. Uh, or you can make them yourself because all the plans are available they tell you exactly what parts you need, how many screws, what size, where they go. The schematics is there for you to put, put them together. And you've got things like um, a bulldozer, a cement mixer, bakery oven, wind turbine that you can build yourself if you were into that kind of thing. Um, so you know, I find that it gives a lot, of, uh, a lot of power to be able to do things, the things that you want. And if we go back to software, this is exactly what WordPress does. Um, one of the goals of WordPress is basically to democratize publishing. Uh, you don't have to have the, 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 the financial clout of the Washington Times or um, sorry, Washington Post or New York Times or any of the big publications before you can write something or get, get your, your word out there. Um, so we all know that it's an open source content management system that currently powers 30% of the web and turns 15 tomorrow. Um, it's incredible that it's been 15 years that this has been going on. And for me, just knowing that there are a lot of businesses around today that are only around because um, Mike Little and Matt Muller have decided, oh, we'll do this thing and it'll be free. The business is built literally on top of this because there, there's lots of people from all over the world contributing to help make this possible. Uh, and this is essentially the reason that I'm here. So I'm going to tell you about how WordPress saved my life. Um, so a long time ago, I found this thing called blogging. And I had no idea what it was. It was just, you know, all the cool kids were doing it. So I thought, maybe I'll do it as well. And I started off using Blogger. But then I wanted to do cool things with the site that I just really couldn't do. And then I found WordPress. And, you know, the rest of it is pretty much history. Um, I found that I, I needed to make a few changes and just trying to scratch my own itch. Uh, meant that I was learning things that I could teach people who were coming uh, just a few steps behind me. Um, and then that led me to the community as well because I was running into issues that I needed to fix. Uh, so turning to the forums, asking questions, going to Stack Overflow and all the other, the, the other places out there helped me get, get information. And being able to help others with the problems that they had kind of built my confidence to the point where I could say, okay, you know what, maybe I can start a business. Maybe I can build sites for, for customers and charge a bit of money for it. Initially, I was like, oh yeah, I don't really, I'm not really good at this, so maybe I'll charge only a little. Uh, but after a while, it got to the point where, you know, this is basically how I kept a roof over my family's head. It was the difference between whether we, we lived out in the street under a bridge or if we had a roof over our heads, whether we, we had uh, money to pay for the next meal. Um, and it didn't matter that I was literate. I said before that I'm a university dropout. I'm from Nigeria. And in Nigeria, your certificate is a big thing. Um, if you want to get a job as a bank teller, you just you collect money from people, you count it, and you, you say, yeah, that's, that's cool, you need a university degree. Even though you, you don't require the training that a university degree gives you to do the job, but no one's going to hire you if you don't have a university degree. So I was basically unemployable for pretty much any job. Yeah. So without WordPress, I would be just a liability, unable to do anything. Because when you fill up forms, government forms, they ask you what is the highest level of education you have, and it's primary school, secondary school, university, master's degree. I would have to say, you know, high school. That's it. That's that's about as far as, as it goes. Even though I have professional uh, certificates in uh, MCSE from back in the day, and all that. It doesn't matter on, on those forms, so no one's gonna gonna employ me. But nobody cared. They had a problem, and I could help, and I could get paid for it, and that was a big deal. At some point, uh, I was owing 
my landlord 11 months rent. And in Nigeria, we don't pay rent on a monthly basis. You pay rent on an annual basis. So if you were, if you, if, if you're, if, if you want to get a new apartment today or a new house, first of all, you pay two years rent upfront. And then at the expiration of those two years, you pay one year upfront every year. So I was owing my landlord for 11 months, which meant, meant let's say we're in 2018. I haven't paid him at all for, for the whole of 2017. And we're about to get into a new year. How he didn't kick me out, uh, that, that's a small miracle on, on, on its own. But being able to, to uh, knock out sites for, for clients in WordPress helped me be able to pay uh, my rent and keep my family you know, housed. And today, I work for Automatic. And this university dropout from Nigeria gets to travel all over the world and talk to smart people like you about cool things like this. Um, I like this quote a lot, uh, but John Kennedy says, the rising tide lifts all, all, all boats. And um, I feel like you don't take anything away, you don't lose anything by helping others to grow, by helping others to shine, the same way that uh, a candle lighting another one doesn't lose anything. So I believe that we should all uh, jump into, in, into the pool and help out. You don't have to be a developer. If you speak more than one language, you can translate. If you have patience, you can teach someone. You just need to, to know a little bit more than they do. And that's it. You don't have to, to be the authority on this thing. You can, you, there's space for you to, to, to contribute. Uh, I'm just going to conclude by saying that open source has the power to change lives and ultimately to change the world. So let us embrace the principles of Ubuntu, the belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity so that we can share freely and help others. For everything we have achieved was made possible by those who walked this road before us. Thank you very much.